Hi everyone, welcome back to series 2 of the Esri UK housing tutorial series focused on grounds maintenance. In today's video, we'll be showing you how to create a field maps form for your field staff to be able to collect and update data when they're out and about. At the end of this video, we'll be showing how your field staff can interact with this form that we had created. So today we're going to be using out of the box tools available in ArcGIS. So we're going to need a creator license in ArcGIS Online. And we'll also be using the ArcGIS Field Maps application. To follow along this video and create your own form, it should take about 20 minutes. It's also worth noting here, I'm going to show you how to make a form specifically relating to tree data, but ArcGIS Field Maps can be used to create a variety of forms about any different data set that you have in ArcGIS Online, whatever the topic. So if you'd like to learn how to create a form generally using ArcGIS field maps, but for a different use case, this video will still be relevant for you. To start, I'm going to quickly explain what ArcGIS field maps is, for those who don't know. ArcGIS field maps is an all-in-one app that uses data-driven maps and mobile forms to help workers perform data capture and editing, find assets and information, and report their real-time locations. It works both online and offline. For example, if you're in the field in a remote area with no mobile connection, that's completely okay. You can still collect your data as normal and your edits will simply be uploaded when you have internet connection. You're also able to configure location-based alerts to notify staff of information when they're entering or leaving an area. And we're going to show you how you can do this later in the video. If you'd like to learn more about ArcGIS field maps, click the link in the video description. Now, let's head over to ArcGIS Online to start making our field maps form. If you've watched part one of this series, you'll recognise this map as the tree data set for my housing association. This data is from Blue Sky's National Tree Map, and I've loaded it into ArcGIS Online to show the trees that my housing association is responsible for. To quickly recap, the National Tree Map has data on tree points, crowns and canopy cover. So the National Tree Map was a brilliant starting point for understanding where my trees are located, but I'd now like to expand that data set by adding additional attributes about the trees, for example, their species, the tree health and the risks that they pose. So to do this, I'd like my field team to go out and collect data in the field, and to do that they're going to need a form, so let's start creating one. Now when the field staff are collecting data, I'd really like to have a photograph of the tree on record. To allow them to take photos or videos in the field, first I need to go into the feature layer for my tree data and enable attachments. Once that's done, click the waffle icon in the top corner to open up your ArcGIS apps list and navigate to field maps. Now you should automatically see the map that we were working on in video one of the series. So let's click this to open it up. Now this is the main editing page in Field Maps. It's where we'll be creating our form. So as you can see on the left hand side, we can see all of the different layers in the map. We can make different forms for each layer, but for the purposes of this video, we're just going to make one for tree points. On the right hand column, you can see all of the different types of questions that can be used in your form. If you scroll down, you'll also see a list of all of the data fields from your data set in question. So in this case, we can see the information that was provided from Blue Sky's data. I'm going to drag and drop a few of these fields onto my form to begin constructing it. Once the question is in the form, you can then rename the display field, add a description for the question and change other aspects of the question's formatting. For this question, I want my users to see information about the tree's ID, but I don't want them to be able to edit this attribute. So I'm deselecting the editable button. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same for the max field, which indicates the height of the tree. I'm also going to drag and drop the additional fields that I created at the end of the last video, health and risk, as I'd like a member of the staff in the field to collect new data for these attributes. To make the form easy for field users to understand, I can create groups of questions, so I'm going to create one titled Tree Information, which is going to contain all of my read-only questions, such as the tree ID and height. And then I'll make a second group for the tree details, 
and this will contain questions that I would like updating. Just to note here, I'm just showing an example of the different types of forms that you could configure, but please feel free to add any of your own questions for the relevant information that you would like to collect. So up until this point, I've created my form based on fields that already exist in my data, but now I'd like to add some new additional questions. When you create a new question, it will automatically create a new field in your underlying data set. So you can then explore this field in the attribute table for your data or on the map. Here I've just added a date and time question. With a question like this, I can choose to only record the date or the date and time if we'd like to see that in further detail. Now I'd like to add a choice question as I want my user to select an answer from the list of predefined possibilities. So I'm going to be using the combo box question type. This question is going to record the species of the tree. Selecting the Create List button allows me to make a list of values that the end user can select from. Just like in the last video, we made a list within the data attribute table in ArcGIS Online, and that's essentially what we're creating here, but from within the form. Once I've added my list options, I can press Done, but I can come back to it at any time and review this list. I can then either add new values or even delete values. Allowing your question to have a no value option is automatically enabled when you create a new question like this. So simply deselect that option if you don't want your users to select no value. You also have the option to select a default value for your question if you'd like. Now there's a few questions in my form that my field users must answer. So I'm going to make these questions required in the logic section of each question. So our form is nearly ready. I'm just going to add one more read only question so that users can identify the crown area of the tree for additional context. And then I'm going to add a question that requires staff to record their name when completing the form so that we've got a record of which staff updated the tree and when this happened. We can then save our form by clicking this button. And there you have it. We've created a form for our field workers to collect information about our trees in our ownership area. Now I'm going to show you how you can make a geofence so that your users will get location-based notifications on their mobile device, notifying them if they're entering or leaving an area. Now, since this survey is about tree data and there are many trees out there, I want my field users to be notified when they're in the area of land that our housing association owns just to make sure that they're not recording any trees outside of the area of our responsibility. To do this, my map needs to include my ownership data, which it currently doesn't have within it. So let's quickly go back to the tree map in ArcGIS Online and add that specific layer to the map. It's automatically added to the top of the layers list, but I'd like it to appear at the bottom so that we can then see our tree data on top of the ownership area. And then I'm just going to update the name of the layer so it's easy for our field users to understand. Once that's done, if I then head back into ArcGIS field maps and refresh the page, then the ownership layer will now appear and I can create my geofence. You can create a buffer if you'd like and then determine what kind of action occurs, whether you'd like a notification alert to be appeared on the user's phone, or for their location sharing to begin when they enter an area. In this case, I'd simply like a notification to appear which says, you are now entering the ownership area. And then another one when they exit the area, which also notes not to collect any data outside of our ownership. When I'm ready, I can simply save the geofence. Now on the left-hand column, you'll see that there's a tab titled App Settings. This is where I can configure the default app settings that will appear for mobile users. So I can define the required location accuracy for data collection and other GPS settings. I can make sure the photo upload size is correct for my use case. If you'd like staff to be able to add new features to your data, you can enable them to do so by clicking the Collect Here feature. I'd recommend you take the time to go through these settings one by one and configure them to your requirements. As per usual, 
When you've changed the settings, you just need to save them so that they come into action. When everything's configured how you like it, we can then look to share the application. To ensure that internal field staff can see the form and update it, we'll need to share the form to the organisational level. Once the sharing level is updated, you can either share this link with colleagues through the link provided or the QR code given on the screen. Now let's see what our form would look like for someone using it when they're out in the field. So the first thing we'll need is the ArcGIS Field Maps mobile application. The Field Maps mobile app is available on Google Play for Android devices and the App Store for iOS and watchOS devices and the Amazon App Store for Windows 11 devices. Just a quick note on which Esri user types can use the mobile application. So the ArcGIS Field Maps app is included with the Mobile Worker, Creator and GIS Professional user type licenses. The Editor user type can also be used with ArcGIS Field Maps to view your organization's maps. However, you must have the Field Maps add-on app license with the Editor user type to enable full data collection capabilities. If you want to learn more about this, please do speak to your Esri UK account manager and you can also click the link in the video description to learn more about using field maps in the FAQ section of our website. So once the field user has the mobile app installed and is logged into your organization's ArcGIS online account, they'll be able to start editing the form. So let's take a look at how easy it is to use the mobile application. Upon opening the app, the user is prompted to enable their location alerts as we configured a geofence for the specific map. Once enabling that, the map will load for the user and they'll be able to see the same view of the data that we were seeing on our laptops in the map viewer earlier in the video. If we zoom in, we can see the user's live location in the field and they can begin to explore the layers on the map. Selecting an area on the map, the user can then see the underlying data attributes associated with that location. They also have the ability to turn layers on and off to see different data sets on the map. When entering our ownership, we can see that the geofence alert has been triggered and the mobile user receives a notification on their device with the message that we configured for them. Selecting a tree's location will bring up the form that we created earlier in the video. Here, the user can select the questions to update them. When selecting date and time, the live date and time will automatically populate. The user can then see the read-only questions but can't edit them. And they can also then go in update questions where they do have editing capabilities, such as defining the tree species. At the beginning of the video, we enabled attachments in the feature layer. So Field Maps has automatically then enabled this feature within the form. So our users can take live photos in the field or select an attachment from their device. When they finish completing the form, they simply press update point and then click the tick in the top right hand corner of the screen to update the data set with our new tree information. That brings us to the end of our second video in this series on grounds maintenance. Thank you all for watching and join us for the next video where we assign tasks for staff in the field using ArcGIS Workforce.